Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. How do you get giant side delts? You can have cap, ultra cap delts and barn door delts. No, wait, hold on, it's barn door back. Cannonball delts, that's what I was thinking of. How do you get that? Well, if you really want big side delts, you might have to create a program to specialize them, to prioritize them. And guess what? That's what this whole video is about. How to do that. Before we get to that, we have to ask the question of why specialize? Because you could just train everything normally and your side delts would get bigger, which is true. However, Maybe you want your side delts to grow a ton in relation to everything else. Like you like how everything else looks, but you just want really, really giant cap delts. Totally fine. And then that's why you specialize. Another reason to specialize is if you just want your side delts to catch up to the rest of you, you might have to reduce the training that you do for other muscle groups so that you have more energy and stimulus to put into side delts. So that's two good reasons why specializing might be better for you than just training everything. Because if you just train everything normally and your side delts either aren't as big as you want them to be or aren't as big as they should be based on how big everything else is, specialization is the answer to both of those problems. Now, you can train everything normally and train everything super hard, and you can actually get a lot of great muscle growth training everything hard all the time. However, if you want to specialize extra, it's going to take a little bit more resource. And that is totally okay, but if you specialize for four, five, six, seven muscle groups at the same time, you're doing 120% of what you would normally do for them. That adds up and it's too much systemic fatigue. The question is, how many muscle groups is too many to prioritize? And a lot of people ask, hey, how many muscle groups can I specialize at once? The answer to that is as many as you can recover from. And only you know that by experimentation. As a beginner, you should be able to focus on everything and get a great result. As an intermediate, you realize that when you lean into some muscle groups, you can't train the rest of your body super hard. So you have to lean away from another muscle group. So maybe you can specialize one at a time by putting one on the back burner at first. At some point, you specialize two or three muscles at a time. You might have to take three or four muscles and put them on the back burner because specialization is that difficult for you. But that's when you're more advanced. So that's just something to consider. So if you ask yourself the question of, well, you know, how much of my muscle can I specialize on? How many muscle groups can I specialize at the same time? I would say start training normally increase on what you train for one or two muscles and see if you can handle it. And if you can handle it, increase for another two or three muscles. And if that's too much, then you know you have to start pulling away at some other points. All right, the basics of specialization. We're saying we're gonna specialize our side delts. What does that actually mean? Because it doesn't just mean train them super hard. You could be doing that in a bunch of different contexts. This means something a little bit extra. It means a couple of things. First, you're going to choose exercises that preferentially hit your side delts because you could train your shoulder in a bunch of different ways, only some exercises are really for the side delts specifically. Another thing is different modalities. For example, my reps are a great way to hit the side delts. You may choose my reps because normally if your side delts are fine and they're growing like the rest, yeah, my reps are really painful and annoying. You might just do straight sets for side delts because everything's fine. They're growing fine. But if you really want to focus on them, you might have to do the things that work the best for them, even at the expense of a lot of fatigue and, well, to be quite honest, literal pain. So my rep side delts is brutal. You might put the little my rep in there in order to get them to grow as much as possible. Because you said, hey, I'm specializing on these. I'm very serious about side delt growth. You would have to do some uncomfortable things. In addition to that, as usual, but even more so in this case, you have to choose the rep ranges that preferentially stimulate the target muscle. If you have trained side delts for a while, you may have a preference that, okay, sets of five to 10, for me at least, sets of five to 10, too heavy, it just hurts my shoulders, doesn't do a whole lot. Sets of 10 to 20 is really great, and even sets of 20 to 30 just fries my side delts out like crazy. So for me, I'm going to choose those higher rep ranges because I know they're guaranteed to blast my side delts. In a specialization program, I'm not taking any chances or risks. If I think, oh, maybe sets of 5 to 10 can work, I'm going to save that for a regular program when I don't really care about my side delts. And if I'm doing that for side delts, oh, actually it works pretty well. Next time I specialize, I'll try it. But whatever you know about your body and whatever you think works now, that's the stuff to throw at it in specialization, the stuff that for sure works. Next is the idea of prioritizing as far as when you include these in your program. I've said this in a bunch of these kinds of videos, but this is super important with side delts. A lot of people say I need to bring my delts up and they start with front delt exercise or they do all of chest, right? All of chest, all of pressing, then a front delt move, and they'll do a side delt move like one move at the end of their program for chest. Come on now, your body's the most tired then. If you want very serious approach to side delts, you should train them first or very early many of the days in the week in which they appear. That's kind of weird. Who the hell like, so if you have delts and buys, you do delts first. If you have chest and delts, you do delts first. 
And the question is, well, won't that interfere with your chest training? It absolutely will. But you don't care about your chest right now. You just want it to stay at least the same size, maybe grow really slow. You care about your front, uh, your side delts. And because you care about your side delts, you will put them first or very early in every day in which they appear. Strange. A lot of times you throw them in the back, but here's the thing. If you're struggling with big side delts, how can you be confused about why they're not big if you're literally back burnering them all the time? You want to front burn them, that means they go first. It's kind of strange, but it will absolutely, qualitatively, you will have a very different experience training them. It'll be better. Quantitatively, you'll be way stronger lifting way heavier loads for more sets and more reps because you won't get tired because you're fresh. And then your side delts will just get more growth off of bigger stimulus. Frequency. And this is a huge point for side delts. When I say in these other lectures, oh, if you want bigger quads, you have to raise your training frequency for quads. Okay, yeah, that's a thing. But you can only train your quads so many times a week hard and they actually recover, maybe two or three. Four times a week quad training is kind of insane. Most people can't pull it off for good reason. They won't recover on time. Doing everything correctly. For side delts, they are mechanically positioned in such a way that you can't damage them a ton. And that means that they are impervious to a lot of fatigue, but also means they require more input, more sets to actually get a good stimulus. Not just more sets, but potentially more frequency. They recover faster. So for side delts, you can get really great results training them twice a week. But if you're serious about bringing them up, three to four times a week is better. And actually in the sample training program, which we're going to be giving you guys in just a few minutes here, you'll see that actually, yeah, they are really pushed four times a week hard. And you think, what the hell? I can't train a muscle group four times a week. Side delts, you probably can because they probably recover pretty fast. Lastly, if you want the best possible outcome for side delts, you could think about reducing or removing some other kind of muscle group training in order to make that happen for them. If you're doing a lot of real delt training and a lot of front delt training, your shoulder joints can just get sore. And then a lot of side delts on top of that can make the problem worse. Take the synergist muscles, the other muscles the side delts use, which is luckily not a whole lot, maybe reduce them, maybe reduce the volume of delt training you're doing in general, the volume of back training, do less trap training. So now your side delts have a free and clear path to just be trained as hard as possible, right? Overall volume for your program might drop, not a ton because side delts don't fatigue you systemically a lot, but you at the very least will have to do side delts first in your program a lot, which means all the other muscles get trained second and by definition can't get as much of a stimulus. So if you're ultra serious about getting your side delts as big as possible, at least consider reducing other stuff in your program. You can try to keep the other stuff the same and add more side delts on top and that might work if the systemic fatigue allows it. But if you suspect uh, that could be a little much, reduce everything else, you'll thank yourself later. All right, actually constructing the specialized plan, what are we gonna do? Frequency, we're going to go to three to four, uh, three or four times a week because we're serious and because our adults probably will recover. Exercises, this lateral raise movement is the core of side delt activity. There's lots of wonky exercises you can use. My bet is that various uh, iterations of the lateral raise are probably a really good idea. You can consider a lot of upright rowing and face pulling as well. In my experience, those aren't as good of side delt stimulators, but they can provide more volume and a little bit more variation. Set numbers at the beginning of your plan will be somewhere in the two to six range, whatever gives you a decent pump and a good sense of fatigue. Sometimes with side delts, that's closer to six than for two because the exercises are not that hard. Loading and reps, you want to use rep ranges. Again, they give you the best stimulus to fatigue ratios. You're doing sets of three with side delts and you're like, oh man, it just hurts my shoulder. Fuck that. Stop doing that. If you're saying to yourself, look, okay, if I was completely honest, Sets of like 20 to 25 reps would be the best for me because they burn and pump like crazy and I make crazy gains. But like, I don't know, that's just like, doesn't seem that heavy and I'm a wuss and I end up using the 15s. I don't want people to see me do that. I'm going to use the 20s and 25s and do sets of 15. It's not as good, but at least I can use heavy weight because heavy weight's good. That's all bullshit. You got to use the stuff that gives you the best amount of fatigue. So if you actually get in crazy pumps, crazy soreness, crazy disruption, crazy gains using ultra high reps and you're just embarrassed about the weights, stop. It doesn't matter. Nobody gives a shit. You just have to use the modalities and the rep ranges that are best for you. In addition, if you are going to do some high reps and some lower reps, try to do the low reps earlier in the week where you're fresh. You can do low reps only fresh and get a good benefit. Higher reps you can do even when you're fatigued and they still give a decent benefit. All right. Progressing through the plan. Yeah, you built your first plan. Great. Now what do you do? Generally, you add sets if needed. If you're recovering way on time, 
And if the amount of stimulus per session isn't enough, add sets. Here's an example. You start with five sets of lateral raises. And in week one, you get a sweet pump or you get really tired and your adults feel really weak until the next time it's time to train them. Great. Five sets next week too, because that checked all the boxes. But next week, those same five sets, the pump's not that great. You could have a better pump for sure. It's not as good of a pump as last time. And in addition to that, let's say you did the five sets, you walked away. Instead of being recovered just on time for your next session, you honestly, like, you recovered hours, if not days before that session. Like a day before, you're like, man, I could have go to trade dolls right now. That tells you that next week, that same Monday that you did five sets, then five sets, maybe it's time for six or seven sets because you can do more and you should do more because if there's a recovery window that's open, put some volume into it to actually get some growth. For reps in reserve, start at around three reps in reserve and by adding a rep here and there as you progress, adding two and a half to five pounds to the bar or to the dumbbells as you progress, what's going to happen is your RIRs are going to start to fall right? You're going to be adding some load, adding some reps. Things are going to get harder. You're going to start at roughly three reps away from failure and slowly over time, it's going to get to zero. Deload, repeat. That's how the mesocycle is constructed. All right. Sample plan. Again, huge caveat. This is just a sample. I'm not saying this is the plan you have to do. This is not the be all end all of plans. There are many ways to skin a cat. All of them the cat hates to the extent that it's conscious. Good God. Just an idea of what to do. But if you've been looking at programs, if you wanted a side delt specialization routine and you're done with all the theory, you're just like, I just want to know what to do. Here's an idea to try and feel free to modify this as you like. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, that's four side delt sessions, you know, integrated into your normal workout, of course. So remember, I'm not saying just come to the gym and do this. I'm saying come to the gym and do this first. And then after you're done, let's say Monday, you're done with these two exercises, you can do the rest of your back or chest or legs, however you want to do it probably truncated because you can't do it all. Week one, lateral raises, three sets, 10 to 15 reps, three RIR. Then we do barbell upright rows, okay? Because the lateral raises have pre-exhausted our side delts, barbell upright rows will now be, again, the limiting factor, much more likely to be side delts. You'll get a much better mind-muscle connection doing these upright rows after than before, in my experience. Wednesday, you do super ROM laterals, okay, super crazy range of motion. And after that, you do cable upright rows. Again, same concept, great stimulus. Friday, you do cable Y raises, which go like this, right? Whichever way you want to face the machine in or out. If you face the machine in and you do cable raises away from the machine, it tends to hit your side delt super well. It also hits your traps a lot. If you face out of the machine, again, the side delt stimulus is very good, hits your traps less. Some people want only side delts and they don't want bigger traps. Some people are like, well, hell yeah, if I can get exercise to grow my traps and I don't have to do a bunch of shrugs, it's a win-win. So whichever one of these you can do, you can do either. You can do both. Friday, cable wire raises for two sets. Higher reps now, sets of 10 to 15. Notice we never did any sets of 5 to 10. In this example, not a good idea. Saturday, cable wire raises again, but this time my rep style and it sets of 15 to 25 reps. Real nasty burn on that day. That's what week one looks like. Week five or whatever your week pre-deload, what would that look like? Again, hypothetically, you don't have to aim for these. You shouldn't aim for these. But by auto-regulation, you might get to something like six sets of lateral raises, very close to failure because remember the RIR falls and the number of sets generally tends to rise on average. Instead of two sets of barbell rows, you're up at four. So that Monday is now 10 sets of side delts. Man, something's got to go from that, right? And we don't start at that because it's too much to start with, but we progress to it over time. Wednesday, we went from two sets of super arm laterals to six. Six sets of super arm laterals in the 10 to 15 rep range, you won't even feel your side delts by then. Cable upright rows finish the job with four sets up from two. Notice we're raising the amount of sets we do in our best SFR exercises most. So super arm laterals generally hit the side delt better than cable upright rows on average. So we go from two sets of those to six sets, adding four sets, multiplying by three. Cable upright rows go from two sets only to four sets. So still a rise, but not as big. Want to put more of our effort into the better exercises. Friday, cable wire raises go up to six sets. And on Saturday, the Maya rep wire raises go up to four sets. Now notice it's not six sets. Why wouldn't it be? Because on those Saturdays, we want a little bit of extra recovery on that Sunday in order to hit it hard again Monday. If we were to just toast everything Saturday, it would screw up the next week. Want a huge stimulus early 
in every week, and then a little bit less at the end, a little bit of fatigue reduction, and then boom, another stimulus, just like that, so we can keep going week after week after week. That's the sample program. Feel free to do it. Next question is, how long do I do it for? Well, a serious attempt at specializing the muscle should be done probably for about three mesocycles in a row, three roughly four to six week periods of accumulation and deload. Change the exercises a little bit. You can increase the rep range a little bit, store train a little bit more high reps with every single mesocycle. You can even try increasing the frequency. So you could do two to three shoulder sessions, side delt sessions in the first meso, three to four in the second, and gee, four to five in the third, totally unsustainable, but that's okay because after that you take an active rest phase. Can you do just one meso and see how it looks? Totally, but generally speaking, the amount of muscle you can put on a just one meso cycle is a little small. You also can't tell if your rep strength improved that much or if anything looks different because it's just not that much time. So both from an analysis perspective and a causative perspective, it's probably a good idea to do several mesos. So if you're real serious, you tell yourself, look, I want bigger side delts, flat out, I'm tired of the small side delt bullshit. I would say three mesocycles in a row focusing on side delts is better than just doing one and being like, ah, I did it. Like, did what? Maybe some people won't notice. After you've done this progression of a whole block of training, Probably a good idea to really reduce fatigue all around. Active rest or low volume phase are both options there. And then you sort of have a few choices. You can repeat that whole thing again and do another specialization block, three mesos, four side delts. Tough. But if you really still want side delts to grow more, that's totally fine of an option. You can go back to normal training where you're not specializing in anything, or you can pick another muscle group, watch another one of these videos that we've made, and specialize another muscle group altogether. The choice is completely up to you. And insofar you have that choice, we have some stuff to help you get those choices executed better. What is that stuff? First, we have an exercise video library. All this, by the way, is in the description below. Exercise video library, so you can get a lot of good ideas about how to train your side delts and every other muscle. Also, that includes instruction. Muscle group training guide, so side delts, if you want to get real scientific with how you train them, really meticulous, that's all described. If you're a bit more of a beginner to this stuff and some of that's like, what the hell is RIR? Our hypertrophy made simple video is a real good place to start. It's a video series describing every element of hypertrophy training. Give that a look. It's in the description. It'll clear up a lot of stuff and make you more advanced kind of instantly. Lastly, stuff that's not free, so that's all free, hypertrophy book. Uh, basically, it's a tour de force describing hypertrophy training. I co-wrote the book. I think it's great. Maybe you disagree. If you want to pay some money for it, it's worth it if you really want to understand the stuff in depth and be able to construct programs not just for yourself but for other people. And lastly, we have these things called the custom training templates. You go, you pay us money. It's like 100 bucks, and you get a six-week program that you can reuse and change all the exercise in at least three times. So it's 18 weeks of training for 100 bucks. Here's the really cool part. If you choose hey, I want to specialize on side delts, the thing automatically designs a structure just like we saw here. And then once you pick your exercises, it is a side delt specialization program built by you to exactly how you want it. And then the auto-regulation and everything works in concert so that you can think about as much of the stuff as you want to, but the program takes care of the rest. So all you have to do is pick the exercises, come in and train hard, do the ratings accurately, and the rest of the thinking is done by the program. We can't say it's guaranteed growth, but it's our best effort as a company, as RP, to give you the best growth that you can. If you're looking for something like this, it links in the description. Give it a buy. Remember, I uh, I need more uh, wood rich people buy. I need a 747 airliner just for myself. A pool on the top level, dance club on the bottom, maybe some seats. Uh, and that kind of stuff isn't free, so please buy more templates so I can fly around the world uh, and uh, have fun with my supermodel friends. And then I wake up and realize I have no friends and life is rather pointless. See you next time.